Tongs were in the Woolen Bar running a shop from 35 to 87. Yes. Mr Tong came out first. He and I think he and his brother came out and they arrived in Sydney. And uh, as he, well, he was, a, I think he was a teenage boy. He would have been. Mm -hmm. But that's where he met his wife, Mrs Tong. Some traveller told them about Wollombar being a new area and, you know, the cedar getters were here by then. And Mr Tong chose my Wollombar to come to. Well, when I came in 53, it was still um, a, a general store with uh, drapery in the top end of the shop and groceries at the bottom end of the shop. But gradually, as the girls went away and um, Keith's sister Rita wanted to go to live in Sydney. As she got older, she retired to Sydney. So it became just all grocery store for Norman and Keith to run. I knew all the tongs in Moreland Bar because I was often in the shop and I knew Mr Tong well. He would often um, give me a little gift out of the shop or some lollies or something. I'd go in after school on the way home from school. I would wander into the shop and just look around at things and um, I liked being in the shop there was so much to look at and I got to know you know Thelma and Rita and Olga and Mrs Tong and then if I went down the stairs to the grocery section there was Keith and Norman. I, and I can remember my uncle Keith even used to have his dog who used to count and do tricks for the customers and that was all part of the part of the show. I think it is that sort of family connection you know that people people know the people that you know, it's a personal connection with the owners and often it goes through generations. So one generation would follow the next generation and they would shop at the same place. Tongs was one of the, the first grocery businesses to have a go at this self-service idea with trolleys. And I can remember we only really had two trolleys and two aisles. So there might have been three aisles, in fact. So it was, there wasn't much there anyway. Before my time, they used to have, um, well, it was Keith in those days used to pedal his bike around, would drive the truck around collecting all the orders, bring them back to the shop, the girls would pack them and then you make the deliveries in the afternoon. When you bought something, the girls would put the money, they'd unscrew the wooden canister, put the money in and pull it, or do something with it, and it shot across the shop to the office. <laughs> it was an overhead wire and it used to fly across the shop and whoever was at the other end unscrewed it, took the money out, put the change in and the receipt or whatever and sent it back. Um, I've never seen them anywhere else. A decimal currency came in in 1966 and um, National Cash Register talked the tongs into having an automatic change dispenser because all of us were old, we couldn't convert very well. <laughs> but, but it was handy with the automatic change dispenser. We had the big till and the change dispenser on the side on a stand and the, the uh, coins used to fall down. Mm -hmm. the, the cash register used to add up, total the items, yeah. and then you put in the amount tendered, and it would tell you how much change was coming out, and the coins would drop down into the dispenser, and we'd just give out the notes. And all the little children just loved sitting there, <laughs> waiting for the coins to come down, and they'd make a grab for the coins. <laughs> I bought my first pair of pedal pushers in tongs and they were in these brilliant green, orange and white stripes, about 15 millimetre stripes and I loved them and um, I think everyone in town was quite horrified. Big supermarket was coming, the writing was on the wall, yeah. we knew Coles was coming. Mm. So it was time to close after 50 something years. Yeah. It was a little bit of a sad time in some ways because, um, you know, and maybe it wasn't just for us, but it was more of a generational thing. I then remember my, my uncles were well past what you'd call a normal retirement age, mm. you know, well into their 60s, if not, I think Uncle Norman may have even been in his 70s and when, they sh when he, he stopped working there. And uh, really they were only surviving through working longer hours. 